Pian Ponikowski uh, from the uh, Center for Heart Disease from Brooklyn, Poland, and we'll be present the confirmed study, which is the effect of ferric carboxymaltose on fun functional capacity in patients with heart failure and iron deficiency. Hector, ladies and gentlemen, it's my great honor to present for you today the effect of the confirmed HF on behalf of my co-investigators. These are my disclosures. Uh, let me start with a very clear statement. Iron deficiency affects one-fifth of the entire population and is perhaps one of the most common nutritional deficiency with deleterious consequences at every level of the body, at the cellular level, at the tissue level, and finally, inevitably, leading to impaired exercise capacity, impaired cognitive performance, and morbidity and mortality. Only recently you heard how important it is to improve the therapy of patients with chronic heart failure with their current status, with the current epidemic of heart failure, we really are eagerly awaiting novel therapies. And today I am going to review for you how important iron deficiency is, which actually affects half, 50% of all heart failure patients are affected by iron deficiency, which complicates the whole story, which is associated with impaired functional capacity poor quality of life, and poor outcome. And although we intuitively are linking the consequences of iron deficiency with anemia, this is actually not the case. They are separate. And this is the background to believe that treatment of iron deficiency itself may be an important novel therapeutic avenue in patients with heart failure, and this is tested in small trials and this is why we decided to address several questions, particularly regarding the longer term sustainability of the effects, the safety, and finally about the outcomes, obviously not in the magnitude Dr. Pak alluded to, to test whether the treatment would be beneficial. We designed a confirmed study, which is in brief summarized for you here. This was multicenter, randomized, double-blind placebo-controlled trial, in brief, we recruited stable ambulatory heart failure patients with impaired ejection fraction, and to ensure heart failure was correctly diagnosed, we also made sure they had the elevated natriuretic peptides. We used the definition of iron deficiency we used in the previous trial. There was an upper limit of hemoglobin of 15. There was a no lo lower limit for hemoglobin. However, patients requiring, requiring their transfusion were excluded. As the iron, given as a ferric carboxymaltose is a brownish solution, we knew that we would have that problem with blinding. This is why we made sure the blinding was really kind of a double blind for patients and for the physicians. We used unblinded and blinded personnel, and for the patient we used both syringes, black syringes as you see here, and the curtains. In this study, 304 patients were recruited in 41 centers in nine countries. They were randomized to treatment with ferric carboxymaltose of placebo. We had two phases of treatment, correction phase where FCM or placebo was given at week zero and six and the dosing was simplified and based on patient's weight and hemoglobin, followed by maintenance phase where iron was given in a dose of bolus of 500 milligrams only if there was still iron deficiency. Let me present you now the results. The primary endpoint was the change in six minutes walking test distance in week 24, and treatment with ferric carboxymaltose improved six minute walking test at 24 weeks. In patients treated with FCM, there was an increase by 18 meters of us. In those treated with placebo, there was a decrease in 16, which overall gave us a treatment effect in the range of 33 meters. If you ask whether the magnitude of the effect is robust and clinically meaningful, I can only say that similar effects regarding the improvement in exercise capacity was only seen before in cardiac resynchronization therapy. 
we investigated several secondary endpoints, including patient global assessment and NEHA class throughout the whole study. And as you can clearly see here, the treatment with ACM significantly improvement both patient global assessment and NEHA class throughout the whole study period starting already very early. Additionally, we also followed six-minute walking tests until the end of the trial, and as you see here, the sustainability of the effect is continued until week 52 with even bigger treatment effect, and also treatment with FCM <coughs> significantly improved patient quality of life in this uh, figure assessed with Kansas City questionnaire. More importantly, as Dr. Packer already said, once investigating novel treatments, we all want to have the data on the outcome. In this study, we evaluated hospitalization and death as a secondary endpoint. We had a reduction in total amount of hospitalization, 46 is FCM and 69 in the placebo group, giving us hazard ratio in the time to first event analysis of 0.71. However, the most striking effect for us is the significant reduction in the hospitalization due to heart failure worsening, which is the most challenging problem for us, with a hazard ratio of 0.39, and I cannot quote so many zeros as Milton did, this is only 0, 0, 0.09 with a p-value. There was also reduction in the risk of recurrent hospitalization by 70%. In conclusion, I would like to say that in symptomatic patients with chronic heart failure and iron deficiency, treatment with IV ferric carboxymaltose over 12 months improved functional capacity, symptoms, and quality of life. The results were very robust, robust and sustainable, and I truly believe that we can conclude that this treatment may also reduce the risk of hospitalization due to worsening of heart failure, and I think that the results of our study form a very strong background to initiate mortality and morbidity trial in the next future. Thank you for your attention. Thank you. Our next speaker is Professor Giuseppe Boriani from Bologna, Italy, who will present uh, the more CRT.